Good afternoon, and welcome once again to my daily chat. This is episode number 826. Yes, I've done a few of these, and if you haven't seen many of them, I'll tell you all about the links at the back end and when you find them. And this is Facebook Live, by the way, in case you're watching on YouTube. It was Facebook Live first. I'll tell you all about that at the back end. So again, episode 826, and this is a warning. Yes, a warning. Speaking to the idea of um, Henri Cornelius, um, um, ping pong, that was the word, ping, ping pong dates. <laughs> because it's something that's come into a couple of conversations about this thing, and it, you can also call it hot and cold. But I'm really talking about it as a warning because if you're experiencing that in your early dating time, either you're doing it or they're doing it, it doesn't bode well for the future. So before I jump into the topic and explain all about this lovely piece of insight, let me introduce myself so you know who I am and why I do this crazy stuff every day for 800 and something broadcasts. My name is Barry Selby, as you hadn't already figured that out from looking around the broadcast. I am an inspirational speaker, a love and relationships expert. Hi, Catherine. And a, um, the author of the best-selling book, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, a book for singles and couples, men and women. It's my first book, and there might be a second one brewing. I've had some thoughts about a second book, because it may be time. We'll see. Anyway, I'm a, a, I do help women create balance in love, life, and business, and I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine, which informs my work with women. And that's what inspired these talks over two years ago now called, hey Della, I nice see you too. Um, it's by these talks starting over two and a half years ago now, this is why it's 825, sorry to me, 826 of them, called Messages from the Masculine Inspiring Feminine Heart. So today we're going to talk about ping pong um, romance, and also I, can, I was going to call it hot and cold, but ping pong sounds better. It sounds more like the feeling you get when you're going back and forward, in and out type stuff, but it's hot and cold, doesn't have the same visceral experience. So, to start from the top, this is usually what happens early in a relationship, but I was talking with a client recently, um, two days ago, I think it was now, about this experience where they didn't obey, they didn't heed the warning signs up front. And now into the uh, into three, four months into the relationship, she's getting a little bit distressed because he's been pulling back a lot. He's hot and heavy and then he backs away, he's hot and heavy and he backs away. And it's really frustrating to her and this is kind of what gave me the thought about, well, this is a warning sign because oftentimes people telegraph their behavior and I'm not speaking to men or women specifically, it happens on both sides of the conversation, just to be clear, that they oftentimes telegraph their intentions without even realizing they're doing it. So in the first few weeks of dating somebody, if your awareness is tuned, is heightened, is more on point, you'll notice certain things that don't fit or do fit and you can proceed accordingly. Now, if you're doing this to somebody else, as in you're the one that's doing the ping, causing the other person to ping pong back and forward, as in in, in and out, hot and cold, etc., etc., then maybe you want to think about owning up to some honesty. And I'll get to that in a little bit, little bit later on. So let's start from the point of view that somebody's doing it to you, like you're the victim of this. And you know my points of view about victims and codependency and everything else, but I'm probably not touching it here, but we'll see. If somebody you're find yourself very interested in, or you're already dating, or if you're already in a relationship especially, and your partner is demonstrating behavior, because they don't even be aware of it, and it's certainly not something you have heard from them saying to you, is they're basically pulling, they're basically ping-ponging, they're, they're in, then out. And I mean this on a um, interest level and intimacy level, I don't mean this sexually speaking, because that's a whole other conversation, and that probably works in that one. But anyway, <laughs> I'm speaking about the fact that they like you a lot and then they don't. Or we should say, they like you a lot and they pull away. They, they're in, very invested and they pull away. That sort of experience of ping pong. First thing I'd say that you definitely should do is bring it to their attention. Because they may be in a place and this... Okay, they might go there. All right, we'll see about that. They might be in a place where they don't know they're doing it. Now, it could be, for example, where the person who you're dating dies into projects on their work and is gone for a period of time then they come back to you and they're fully into you and excited about you and then they go back to work again maybe it's a project by project basis maybe they're maybe in the movie scene and they go on a movie location for six weeks and they come back again the thing is if that's the way they do their life ask yourself the question is this what you want this the, the another layer of this is if this is something you're um familiar and comfortable with do some checking inside too, because if this is a similar experience to your previous relationships, this is going to be telling you something about your own track record, so to speak. And I talked about this whole thing yesterday, so I recommend you look at that broadcast because it really, um, it really spoke to what it was that 
we tend to attract and what we do in relationship. But I'm not going to go there this time because I did a whole talk yesterday about that. So I recommend you go watch that. That was episode 825. So first of all, have a clear conversation. Just say you're noticing it feels like your they, whoever they are, your partner, is really close and intim- intimate with you and then they back away and they do other things. Now, if it's just a work thing or they're in a commitment where they have to do some other things, that may be a concern for you, maybe not. Maybe it works for you, maybe it doesn't. But if it does concern you, have a conversation now. If they don't have, well, uh, maybe they make stuff up. One of the challenges with this is if they don't have a defined job that you know they go to to do, they just disappear for a while, you want to ask yourself this other question. Was that Catherine? She should, she should leave him since life is not a ping pong game. Well, this is the thing, Catherine. I live in LA, so I know a lot of people like this, where they go away for two or three months at a time because they're working on a film project and they come back to town. Some people have relationships like that that actually work because it depends on the people. But generally speaking, I agree with you. It isn't, it, it, life isn't a ping pong game, at least not intentionally, so no. But the other thing I was going to say is that it's quite possible if this person is ping ponging with you, as in they're hot and cold with you, it may be the fact they might be seeing somebody else as well. And that's a whole other kind of can of worms, which means now if you're in, if you're open to polyamory, which some people are, then fine. But most people I know are not, and most of my clients are not, because that's not my focus either. If that's something happening again, you might want to think about walking away, because you're not getting what you want if this person is splitting the focus with somebody else. So again, it's not just a black and white rule here. It's being clear that there's some opportunities and some conversations to be had, understanding what's really going on, and to get to the bottom of it, because you discover some, for example, that they are seeing somebody else, maybe you don't want to have that level of freedom. Maybe you want to have more commitment and uh, poly- and uh, monogamy involved, in which case, if that's the case and you like this person, have a conversation because you might better see where they are and see if they want to move to where you are energetically. Make sense? Flipping the script to the other side. If you're the one causing this, creating a, creating a push-pull, hot and cold, ping-pong experience with your partner, why? What is it that's driving you to do this? Now, if it's something where you have a bad habit you want to fix, we can talk about that. But if you're not even aware you're doing it because they bring it to your attention, you're like, oh, what am I doing? It may be something else going on. And it might be worth getting some support for that. But if you're doing it from the point of view that you have other things going on, have you told them that? Because the other thing is, if this is something you're going to do with that person, or if they can do it with you, if up front there's a conversation to be had saying, look, this is the way my life is, and if you're fine with that, we can go ahead and proceed with dating. Because that's a better way of doing it, rather than just dating somebody, not telling them, then having this whole thing of avoiding coming back and going away and coming back. If you start off by saying, just so you know up front, I have a job that takes me out of town two months a year, two months, uh, every two months or something like that. Or I have a commitment to my work where I have to go into the office and I, I work 24 hours a day for deadlines or whatever that is. Is that if they're up front with you in the conversation and it's honest, and it's honest, this is a key piece, then you may want to see about proceeding or not. Because again, it depends if it works for you or not. But for most people, this doesn't work. So if you're going to be involved in a relationship where there's a ping-ponging experience, you may want to think about making a different choice. So again, back to the first one, the earlier one I was mentioning, if you're the one causing the ping-pong experience, if you're the one instigating the closeness and then then being far away, and you're aware of it, again, because you may not be aware of it, ask yourself why. Is it because the person you're with is, it's too much and you can't handle being with them full on? That maybe you need to pull away and pull back? Again, have the conversation, speak to them about this, that maybe your relationship's too intense and you need to take time apart. That's possible too. On another level, are you in a place where you're unwilling to commit fully because you're scared of intimacy? Maybe you are. There's lots of things. I mean, I'm giving a few of many because the thing is, I'm giving you not. I'm not giving you the full list, obviously, because there's a much bigger list than I can give in a short talk. But there's many opportunities where you might find yourself having reservations, having difficulty fully in committing, diving in deep because you feel that you've got to protect yourself. Or maybe you've been hurt before and you're not willing to commit full on because if you're in fully with that person, they might hurt you like the last person did. All of the things I'm talking about, by the way, are clues that maybe you want to get some support. And I'm offering my services in that area because it's in my work. But I want to make sure you get the point is that communication is key, as I said, in all the instances I mentioned. Secondly, if you're aware of some stuff for yourself to work on where you're not feeling free and clear to love fully, you may want to get some support by getting coaching. 
But again, if this experience is happening, uh, by, let me sidebar, if this experience is happening repeatedly, you may want to get some help, definitely get some support because you may not see clearly because most of us are not that able to look in the mirror that effectively, you may not see clearly what it is you're doing that's hurting you or hurting them. This is why people who see coaches, you know, to sidebar the other way, <laughs> or sidebar a different way, I know many people who talk about, you know, why would they go see a relationship coach? And I look at it and say, well, I know going to the gym, it helps work with a trainer and somebody can help you get on form because you can go to a gym and there's all the tools are there, but to know what to do right without hurting yourself, what to do well to build up the direction you want to go, to set the goals you want in place, to keep you accountable, hold you to where you want to go. That's what a trainer does for you in a gym. It's kind of similar in relationship coaching. The work I do is mostly with single people, but I hold them to account because I'm really working with them for the highest good of where they want to go. They set intentions, and I work with them on the goals they want to set, but also I show them how to do it the right way. The tools I have are not barbells and dumbbells or machines, but they're practices and deep discovery processes and guidance to help you get where you want to go. So that was a little marketing piece, by the way, I'm just promoting my business to you. But the thing about it, again, back to the beginning, is having communication with your date and getting help if you're not sure how to do it is what I recommend highly you do. That's why I do the work I do, is to make sure that my clients have a much higher quality of relationship, a much higher quality of, st of understanding, and a much higher quality of self-support so they don't choose relationships that don't support them. It sounds so simple. <laughs> and in some ways it is. It's not always easy, though. And so my invitation to you is to look at your life in your relationship dating experience and seeing where you are. Is this what you want? Do you want to take it to another level? Are your relationships iffy? Are you having some bad luck in relationships? If you're having this experience about the ping pong experience, are you ready to change? If you are, I'm gonna put some links in the comments to help you because my intention is to help you get what you want if you're willing to help yourself. So. I did. I mentioned this every day for the last, the last few weeks. In fact, there's three links I'll put in the comments because I know this always works. Is so I will put a link in the comments so we can talk. It's a complimentary clarity conversation. I'll also put a link in the comments for my self love practice because, as I mentioned, self support, self honoring, self owning is such a powerful piece of the work. That's a, that's a process you can do on your own that will transform your experience in any arena of dating and relationship and everything else. Bit of shown, Catherine. I'm glad you like. Um, I recommend you sign up for that as well because the self love practice will change your life for the better. And a practice you can do every day easily because it's only five minutes in the morning, five minutes in the evening. Um, thirdly, I put my book in the comments because my book, I'm Biased, is a really good book. <laughs> it is a bestseller. It does help you get clarity if you're single or in a relationship. Um, and do the work. Get clear about what you want. Get clear about what you're willing to put up with. Get clear about what it is you're doing in relationships to see if it works for you. These simple reminders, all 826 of my broadcasts, will help you with that. <laughs> That's why I say if you get a session with me, it's a lot quicker than spending your time walking through 800 broadcasts. There's a lot of stuff to talk about. Um, so again, remind you, this is a Facebook Live I do every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time on my personal page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby. Thank you for being here live, by the way, if you are. If you're watching the replays, you can watch them either on my business page on Facebook, which is barryselby.author. Please like my page. Or alternatively, I put them on YouTube, because some people are much more on YouTube than they are on Facebook. And my YouTube, pay, my YouTube um, channel, that's the word, is Barry Selby. You can subscribe to my YouTube channel. And there's a playlist on there called Messages from the Masculine. So all my talks are there for you to get help, get guidance, get inspired. And if you sign up for help, I'll help you as well. So those three links will be in the comments, as I mentioned. You know where to find my replays. I invite you to join me tomorrow at the same time, same channel, from 5 p.m. Pacific time, right here. And it'll be a whole different topic. That'll be episode 827. And again, if you didn't watch yesterday's broadcast, 825, I invite you to watch it because it talks a lot about the inner, inner programming we have, the inner running we have. Yes, indeed. What we do, what we do, does affect what others do. Yes, that is very true, Catherine. That's why I want to help you get clear about what you're doing and what you're being, or how you're being, so what you affect other people, it's for the better and they improve their lives too. That's one of the benefits, by the way. The more you work on yourself, the more people around you improve as well. It's amazing how that works. So with that, I thank you for watching. I'll see you again tomorrow, same time, same channel. And as always, take care of yourself. I'll see you again soon.